and say what you got. What do you got? You do have to be curious. All right. Do you believe that with Connor and Mayweather practically assured of fighting, is that going to start out a craze in the MMA world where all the MMA fighters are coming out wanting to fight boxers like Jimmy Manoa came out, said he wanted to fight David Hay. Aldo wants to fight somebody. Do you believe that is going to be a real trend? I can't I can't deny it. The trend has already started. I mean, you just named two number one contenders. Should John Jones not be clear in time, Jimmy Manawa is going to fight Daniel Cormier for the title. So call him a number one contender. And then you have the sitting champion in Jose Aldo. So yes, that trend has already uh begun. You've you've even seen Nate Diaz throw his name in there. Nick Diaz has been after it for a while. Listen, here's the problem though, Joel. There is no money in boxing. And there is some make believe factor that the big money comes in boxing because the biggest money has come in boxing that is true there has been no hundred million dollar or quarter million dollar payday in mma but there has in boxing the biggest money has come from that guys don't understand that that happens once every blue moon and there's only two boxing events on pay-per-view worth a damn every 12 months and that's getting stretched every 16 months if Mayweather doesn't fight, there is no marketable box office that there is in boxing. So while Mayweather comes in and grabs up all the money, and then you got to run back to when De La Hoya did it, then you got to run back to when Mike Tyson did it, there is no money in boxing. But it is a reality that the biggest money has come from boxing. So these guys in MMA that are setting the world on fire, getting a ton of opportunity, and making damn good money are now thinking that the grass is greener on the other side, and they're wrong. It's not even greener for Connor. If you take Mayweather out of this equation, Connor versus De La Hoya or my Orga or anybody else that still does that sport doesn't sell. You need those two guys at that right time because Floyd is the one that's driving that force. Now connor has got to go over to his sport and play by his rules. If you brought Floyd over to MMA, it doesn't have the same allure. We all know how that ends. For some reason, there is speculation by many of how it would go in boxing. It's, it's a disrespect and a disregard for boxing, but it still exists. It's still a real thing. That is going to be awesome. It's going to do awesome business. Jose Aldo versus anybody in boxing does not draw what Jose Aldo versus anybody in MMA draws. The same would go for anybody else that you want to throw at. You're talking about Manawa. He wants to go over and fight. Hey, hey, I'm all for it. Go ahead. If you think that that's some bigger paycheck than what you can get doing MMA, you're wrong. And it shocks me to the point that it frustrates me that our own guys in MMA think the grass is greener in boxing, a next to non-existent sport that does one level of business a year as long as Floyd raises his hand and said yes. And when Floyd has stepped aside, and Floyd has stepped aside, there is nobody left to run with that torch. We haven't experienced that in MMA. We watched when Tito Ortiz was the biggest draw, and when he left, Randy Couture picked it up. And when they both left, they created something out of Andre Arlovsky. And when he left, they passed the torch to Chuck until they passed it to St. Pierre, to Lesnar, to Rampage, to me, on to Connor. There's always been somebody in MMA that can, that can go and build. And you see the same thing in professional wrestling, what Vince McMahon's been able to do. When Hulk Hogan stepped aside, boom, he created The Rock. He created Stone Cold Steve Austin. He, he has an ability to create something, which Scott Coker and Dana White and the guys that promote MMA have that same ability to do. Boxing does not, and boxing has not. And as far as this big money being in boxing, it is an absolute certainty absolute certainty the box offices are revealed to us and so are these guys as persons it is simply not true however i will concede the biggest money has come from boxing you tell me one guy you want to see jose aldo box you tell me one guy that you would pay more money to see jose box than you would to see him do what he does what which is to fight mma it's silly and it's ridiculous and it doesn't carry over to anybody and it doesn't carry over to connor it only carries over to Connor versus Mayweather right now in today's world with all the perfect ingredients in place. It doesn't even carry over to Connor versus Pacquiao. It doesn't carry over to Floyd Mayweather versus Jose Aldo. Those fights do not sell. Connor versus Floyd is interesting for a small window, but that window's right now. Does it hurt? Let's say three top guys go out and get railroaded in boxing. Does it hurt MMA? Uh, yeah, it will hurt MMA, but it shouldn't. The truth is that is a different sport. Anybody that goes into it should lose at it. Anybody in MMA, no matter how good you are in basketball, I mean, you could be LeBron James, you bring them over and you stick them on a wrestling mat. They're not the same thing. 
you stick any wrestler, Jordan Burroughs, David Taylor, and you go put them on a basketball court with LeBron or in a tennis court with Serena, they're going to get destroyed. It doesn't speak to them as an athlete, and it also doesn't speak to their sport. Yes, the public perception will be that boxing won. Are they the same thing? No. Should it show courage on behalf of the fighters for willing to go in and mix it up disciplines? Yes, it should. Is the reality that their stock will drop a little bit? Yeah, yeah, it'll drop a little bit. Not a lot, not a lot. But if you're asking me the tipping point, yes, it would tip towards a negative. All right. Uh, we talked about DJ Demetrius Johnson on uh, Your Welcome podcast a few days ago. And I, I got a lot of input from fans. And one of the gentlemen said he believes the reason DJ is having a hard time getting a run and he said he just experienced this, was that everybody looks at how small he is and says, I've got a friend that could beat him up. Even though how ridiculous that statement is, to us, that's a statement to people who are watching fights. Yeah, listen, th th there's a little bit of reality there. However, that reality, I'll give you an example why that reality does not exist. If you want to see a big fight, with Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson is a face. He's a nice guy. Baby face is a, a, a term within the industry, meaning the good guy. Demetrius is straight up a great guy. His spot is solidified. His next fight will be for the world championship and his spot next fight will be a main event. The only opportunity that there is, is for the contender, a contender in that division. When you have the likely suspects between Cejudo and Benavides, they're also nice guys. So who gives a damn? You're going to put two nice guys in there. I don't have anybody to cheer for. Every movie, every script ever written will create a bad guy. There is no movie unless there's a good guy and there is a bad guy. So if you want to write a script and give a scenario that is sellable and marketable and that you could commercialize, you must have a bad guy. So Hudo is too dumb to do it. So Hudo is my friend. I don't mean to put him down, and I would not put him down in any walk of life other than the reality that he does not know which way is up when it comes to marketing his own career. Benavides is also a pretty shy and just a kind of a nice guy. Do you know what you just did? There's an opportunity there for Joel, for somebody to get some level of wits, and they're getting it right now for free from the highest paid, biggest draw in the history of this sport. The one guy that has been able to navigate every single angle of this from participation to promoting to commentating to covering the sport and collect a paycheck is me and I'm telling you right now you're not going to get that spot nor should you get that spot unless you do something different which is to create some level of interest you're going to have to be the bad guy and nobody wants to be the bad guy but that's the only seat still available the good guy seat is taken Demetrius is going to fight for the title in a main event in that weight class the only opportunity is who's it going to be against that anybody's going to give a damn about. And the only way to make people give a damn is to be the opposite of Demetrius. He's the good guy. you got to go the other. And I'm seeing guys try to come in there, and they both want to be the good guy. Now, as far as the, the smaller weights go, a lot of people have said that. And throughout history, those people are correct. But that was corrected uh, in 1996 when a young man took over the scene of combat sports by the name of Oscar De La Hoya. He is the first guy to break the mold and do big, huge box office. It wasn't a heavyweight attraction. That torch was then passed to two guys, Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. Now, in today's world, of course, Floyd Mayweather is a lot bigger draw than Pacquiao, but it's still those little guys. The guys they're grooming to take over that sport are not the guys that ruined boxing and the boring-ass Klitschko bums uh, or anybody else that's a big guy. They're, they're grooming Triple G which is about 160 pounder. So the sport has actually changed in that. And Demetrius could do just fine and just fine numbers. This is not Demetrius's fault. It is up to his opponents to come in uh, a a and wear the black hat because he's already got his spot and he's wearing the white hat and it's just not going to change. And if you can't get that reality, then I can't force you to. I have taken all the money in this business and I'll continue to do it unless somebody else wants to listen. I've written the blueprint and I'm handing it out for free, right? For free. I didn't do this early on in my career. I kept all these secrets. Myself. I'm handing it out to you now, but this is the reality. There is nobody compelling or interesting for him to fight. There's just bodies for him to go in and destroy. And there's only so much money. You can go ask Roy Jones Jr. There's only so much money you can get when people know what the outcome is. If somebody knows the outcome, they can't do it. It's the very same reason that Bill Goldberg squashed Brock Lesnar twice before they did the mega event of WrestleMania and let Brock make it right. 
because you have to correct that. You have to create some kind of curiosity. If I know the outcome, I don't care. And if I think I know the outcome, even if I'm wrong, if I think I know the outcome, I don't care. Don't forget Mike Tyson and Buster Douglas didn't do big business because Buster couldn't win. Now, we understand that reality said something different, but we really believed that. And perception is reality. And our perception was that's not the guy that belonged in there with Mike. They didn't sell out the arena and they didn't do big business. And that's one of the most epic fights in history because of the outcome. I don't give a goddamn about history. You can't make money on history. History never sold a ticket. Respect never sold a ticket. Booze versus cheers is what sells tickets. You're a genius. That was a great run right yeah, there. Yeah, man, but it's it's really quite simple. I didn't create this. I was just an observer that saw this happen in other walks of life. And I bring up Hollywood to you by an example. Nobody wants to be hated in MMA. They just can't do it. If somebody lights them up on their Twitter and tells them that they're a jerk, I mean, their feelings are hurt. These tough guys, their feelings are hurt so bad they just don't know how to go on. Some fighters think they have to go commit suicide or turn to drugs and alcohol and all these things because some stranger on Twitter tweeted them something and they read it. Man, none of this stuff is real. In this business, two things are real, and don't ever forget this, the money and the miles. You are going to live out of hotels. You're going to be on airplanes. You're going to be in places away from home that you don't want to be. That stuff is real. And the only other thing that you can hang on to is the money. There's nothing else that's real. The make-believe fake fans that you want to thank for sticking by you through the thick and the thin. Who gives a goddamn, man? They don't care about you and you don't care about them. They didn't help put food on your table and you didn't help put food on theirs. It is what it is. A fan has the right to change his mind any time he wants to. So if you want to evoke some kind of emotion and you want to become an interesting person, that is completely incumbent upon you. And the fighters can't do it. But every motion picture from the history of time, somebody gets paid and written the script that they're going to be a bad guy, that they probably wouldn't be ordinarily. But that's what they're going to be here because that's what the script calls for. And if you're too stupid to figure that out, you don't deserve anything more. 